Okay, folks, welcome back. This is uh, session six, exponential and family, and we're going to continue with the inference part. Um, that is how we go from the data to the models. And as you can see, everything is already written because I'm really dumb and I forgot to check the battery of the camera and the battery died on the first round. So I just ha have everything already here. So I'm just going to go <laughs> and explain everything back. And this is a nice experiment actually. So if you like like this already written and just explaining on it, just let me know. Uh, and I can just do this instead of the other thing and explaining everything at the same time, okay? So quick and really nice experiment due to circumstances, okay? So for the inference part, if you remember, um, we're always doing two types of things. We're doing the maximum likelihood estimation or the maximum posteriori uh, estimation. In the maximum likelihood one, we have a, a distribution of uh, the data given the parameters, right? So this is the likelihood of, of the data. Um, basically, what we have here is uh, our, our previous um, distribution, and we are just applying it in our D uh, data set, right? In this n amount of samples. So this is just the same distribution that we had before. This is our H xi times the um, uh, partition function, we just call it G in this case, and a, a function of the parameter is some uh, eta of theta, and this is then uh, the summation of the uh, phi of x i, right? So like all the all the x i data points that we have over there. And since we're just doing the multiplication of that thing, we have the multiplication of all the h x i's, all the different uh, functions that depend on the data, and we have n of these constants here, right? Because we have n data points. And then the multiplication of those exponentials, it just becomes this big summation over here. And we can do a change in notation and we can just name these particular um, sums over here as a phi of d and we just kind of vectorize the summation just to make it uh, simpler, right? In Into air quotes. Now, as you remember, like, we want to just compute the log of this distribution and then solve for that. So we just apply the logarithm into this previous function. So this G, I'm just going to call it the, the log of Z, right? That is A. And we have N times because the N just dropped the drop down there. And then this is just the, the exponential over here. And we just have the phi D plus this summation of the log of the H X I. And since we want to compute this uh, estimator, right, we need to do the derivative with respect of theta and solve when that thing is equal to zero to get the optimal value. And we just apply then the derivative with respect of theta over here and D just cancels out and we just end up with the derivative of this part over here. So it's just phi of D minus the derivative of a over here. And if you remember from the previous part, we just found out the, the, deriv the derivative of this um, cumulative function a is just the expected value of my phi of x, right? And that is really nice because now I can just simply solve this and just pass this uh, over the other side of the equation and, and solve for n, uh, pass the n, right? And solve for the expectation over here. And we just find out that this is just our, our first moment, right? So this is what we call the matching moments of, of the distribution. And now we can do the same thing for the maximum posteriori, and we can just solve for the base for the family, uh, for the exponential family, actually. And what we see here is that the likelihood will have the same shape as we had before, right? So by dropping just these uh, HXI components, we have that the likelihood is proportional to this part over here, right? So it's just a G theta N, my partition function, and the exponential of the of the parameters over here. And we do some change of variable here because we're going to do pseudo counts with the priors and, and, and this SN, it's easier to just uh, be in, 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 in the same notation instead of having this summation of the phi xi. So 
just bear with me a little bit in here. And if you remember, we had two, two particular forms, the canonical form and the normal one. And the canonical is just pushing this partition function inside of the exponential. And we just use the cumulative function to, to represent that. And when we have this particular shape, uh, due to the due to the the um, normalization over here, we can just call this um, S n that is multiplying the 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 parameter over here, and then just do some some change of variable again, and just to leave it in the same shape because now n is multiplying both of them, and then I can just use this S bar instead of my S n and do the same this the same representation this this will come useful in the in the following forms so my prior is uh it should be of the same shape of these to get a conjugate right so i also want it to be in the, the same exponential form just instead of do, using these uh counts i'm going to use a pseudo count so i have this new new zero over here and some estimate in this case tau zero over here instead of my my summations of the SXI, right? Um, so if I do that, I will end up with this shape that you, you see here. So you can pause and, and compare them and you will see that they are basically the same, the same things. And we can transform this into the canonical form exactly in the same way as we did before. So we just pass and push this G theta inside. And in order to make this in the same shape as this one, I need to also introduce this, this sort of tra uh, transformation over here, such that my um, tau zero var is uh, proportional with respect to the counts, right? And this helps me because I can separate then the, the size of the pseudo data from the mean of the sufficient statistic, this uh, tau zero var that I'm introducing here. And this again is all from the prior distribution, right? So it is up to us to define how much information I want to put into this new and this tau, okay? So now I can use either the, the canonical form or the normal form to, to compute this. Uh, my posterior, the theta given the data, is nothing else but the multiplication of these two things over here, right? So I can just do the multiplication of them and just arrive at this, at this distribution. So if we do it in the normal form, it is just matter of, of multiplying these two distributions over here. And as you can see, we, we end up with the G theta nu plus N, and I can factor this, and I will end up with uh, theta of, uh, eta of theta of times SN plus tau zero, right? And this is the parameter that we have here, that you see, you see in here. And we can do the same thing for the, for the canonical part, right? Like the canonical form. And by just changing shape and multiplying these two things over here, I end up with this expression that you see over here, right? Um, again, it's just a matter of multiplying and grouping. So I have my uh, eta transpose times these things over here. So I can just simply uh, factor, factor it out. And my a eta that I can also factor out by, by, do this, by doing this multiplication over here. And the thing here is just a little bit tricky because if I want to put it in this standard form, you can see that my, my parameter in here is, uh, is what, what it is accompanying the, the cumulant function, right? My new zero in this case is my first parameter. So in this case, my first one will be new zero plus n. However, the second one, the, and this is important, right? Because the second one, it is uh, the multiplication of my parameter and, and this um, value over here, right? My, my, my first parameter. And if you see my, my first component over here does not have these, does not have this um, new zero plus N in, in the denominator. That means like my parameter should have it to, to cancel it out. So we just complete the parameter and we end up with this canonical form over here, right? So nice, this is with respect of my inference value, right, for the maximum posteriority. And now we can also have the posterior predictive in the same way. And if you remember, the posterior predictive is the task of getting uh, given future data, we just call it D prime of uh, N prime X bar samples and the past data. How, how do I compute the, the likelihood of that data, right? So basically this is just doing marginalization of the parameters. So I have my likelihood 
of the new data given the parameters and the estimation or the inference of the of the parameters given the data. And I just want to do the averaging of those of those distributions. So if I plug this inside of here, I end up with the multiplication of all my H, H of the XI bars times my um, uh, partition function of the of the data times the integral of um, this uh, uh, partition function here, the, the g theta of the prior times the data times the likelihood. Because if you remember this p theta given d over here is actually just the um, pd given theta times the p theta, right? So I can just push it, push it inside. Times exponential, ignore this d theta and the integral over here because we already have this and I put it over there. So uh, just mistakes were made in the middle. Um, this is just exponential. So I just put the exponential, I put everything inside, right? So this is just the summation of the eta case, the summation, sorry, the summation of the eta case times the tau k and the summations of the s case given the data and given the, the future data over here. And if you solve for this integral, you will see that we end up with the same exponential function and it just changes what the, 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 the values are, right? So the integral is again, some partition function with the parameters that I have over here. So we just end up with this partition function and, and this integral over here in which I just replace my different parameters using these, these approximations, right? I'm just renaming these, these values over here. Now, this may be too abstract for you. So if you want, we can just try to push it down a little bit and we can go back to our Bernoulli ex example. And in that Bernoulli example, you remember like we had this likelihood that is Bernoulli is one minus theta uh, up to N for the D data uh, that we have at the beginning times the exponential of the logarithm of this parameter, right? Theta over one minus theta times the summation of the XI. So this is the same thing that we had uh, in the first parts that when we were discussing how to transform the exponential family into this one. And the prior, it should have the same shape, right? Because again, I want a natural conjugate prior. So I'm just kind of use the same shape. And this shape, I'm just going to assume that I have some pseudo count, nu zero, and some probability instead of theta, uh, tau zero over here. And, uh, sorry, instead of um, the summation of the xi is tau zero, right? And what I'm going to do is like, just put it in the same shape. And then you will see here that when you transform it back, instead of like from the normal uh, exponential, you, you see that it's actually a beta, right? So we will take use of these to solve the integral later on. But that's why we're coming back because you may be thinking like, wait, 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 we got a second. But at the beginning you said like, you like to have it in the exponential form and now you are pushing it back. So what is the, the deal with this? In this case, you know what the, 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 the solution is for the beta, right? So you are taking advantage of that. But when you are doing this for any other distribution or any other shape or any other particular instance of the exponential family, you may not know it. And in that case, it is easier to work with the, the exponential form, okay? And now if we go and we continue, the posterior is just the multiplication of the likelihood and the prior. So we multiply these, these two things together, right? And we just plug in the, the theta's and the exponents and you will see that you end up again with a beta over here. So you just sum up the theta's and the one minus theta and you can pass it again and check this uh, this uh, computation over here. And you will see that you end up again with a, a, a theta, right? With a beta form. So we just, we can just call these things over here, my beta alpha and, and this beta parameter, right? And the, the posterior predictive that is just like the, the final part of, of our all the whole framework, we just want again to compute what is the P uh, of the new data given the, the parameters times the, the, the parameters given the data, right? And the parameters given the data is just this beta that we had before. So I'm just renaming this alpha and beta as alpha n and beta n given the amount of data that I have in, in, in this D uh, data set over here. And they are not nothing else but 
the um, the samples that I have from my data plus my priors information, right? So if you do this integral, you end up with the with the gammas, right? So if you remember, if you don't, just please go back and check these uh, the lectures with respect to the to the beta computation at the Dirichlet. So you you will remember about these these gammas uh, integrations, right? So this is the 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 partition function of the of the beta, and we just have this ratio of the gamma. So at the end, we are just counting how many many instances we have inside of that, and then when you solve for this. Uh, you take this uh, gamma out from the beta, and then you end up with the counts of the of the theta and the one minus theta. So you just get back to this theta and plug it inside, and then do this multiplication, and you end up with this with this thing over here. And now you see that this shape is exactly the same as the beta. So the integral will, will be the ratio of the of the gammas. And we just push this inside of here, and again we just do some change of parameter to to make it simpler and this is just a multiplication of these gammas of the new alpha m plus m and beta m plus m and this new alpha and new beta is just uh, augmenting my counts okay so i'm just adding more information to my counts in this case my alpha m plus m is nothing else but the alpha n plus my s prime counts from the this data prime count and the beta is basically the same thing so this is the, the beauty of these type of algorithms because we can just add data <clears throat> and the data it just keeps adding into the parameters and we can just reuse these parameters to keep going and keep doing the computations okay so this is how to do the inference within the exponential family <coughs> excuse me and the next part is how to do how to compute the maximum entropy and see why this exponential family works the way it does okay see you then